The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, great. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this week indicator series. Okay, so for those of you who are first time joining us, um, quickly introduce to you what we do over here is um, every week. Okay, for Monday evening, we'll come in and uh, we'll share with you a particular indicator. Uh, and the idea and the objective over, the, over here is to introduce you to various indicators so that you, number one, understand them. And of course, uh, if you feel that this is something that you like in terms of the indicator, you'll be able to, of course, then use it to help you in your own trading. Okay, so uh, for those of uh, uh, for those of you who have been joining us for some time, right, welcome back again. So uh, my name is Kayong, and today I'll be the one sharing with you on today's topic which is uh, we're going to talk about Kessler channels, okay? So uh, for some of you who are perhaps a little bit more experienced into technical analysis, probably see this and say that, hey, isn't this something very similar to, you know, um, Bollinger Bands, uh, Donchen channels, or even Moving Average, okay? So the concept of it, of course, um, pretty much similar, okay? But there's still that slight difference on each of this indicator, right? And today we'll dive deeper into understanding what Catler channel is, how to use it to analyze the market, of course, uh, how we can use it for our own trading as well. All right, so uh, before we go into today's topic, of course, I want to spend just a couple of minutes to quickly introduce myself. I think this is important, especially for those of you who are first time listening to me, okay? Um, at least then we get to connect a little bit better, get to know each other a little bit better. Okay, so my name is Kayong. Um, I started trading back in 2012. Okay, so to date, I think you plus or minus, that's about eight to nine years. Okay, uh, of course, um, since 2015. Okay, so I started 20, 2012. Uh, then, of course, I spent a lot of time, effort to go and study the market. And in 2015 onwards, uh, that's where I started to kind of like, you know, transit towards full time trading, investing. Of course, um, since then, I've also been sharing across various cities and countries in Southeast Asia. Okay, these are just some of the photos. Um, of course, you can see we do a lot of physical sharing before last year where, um, you know, the whole CMCO um, pandemic and then the lockdown, right? So that's why now we have a lot of online sharing sessions, something similar to what you are participating right now. Okay, so um, over here, I just want to show you quickly also some of the results um, so that I want you to know that um, you know, the things I share, I always try to be as practical as I can. Uh, and I think that's important because, you know, if today uh, someone comes up to you and share with you about trading, investing, I think it's important that the person is actually very active and um, it's, you know, putting whatever we have in terms of our experience into the actual market. Okay, so over here, I um, just want to show you some of my personal results. Okay, this is from 2019 in terms of FX portfolio, right? This is just mainly the Forex currency. Um, this is in 2020, which is last year. Okay, and uh, of course, you can see there are some wins, there are some losses. That's very common in trading. Okay, and uh, this is 221 um, as of February. Okay, so this is all from FX. Uh, 221 so far, so good, right? Okay, I also invest and trade in the US stock market. Uh, I'm actually a little bit more active in the U.S. stock market um, last since last year. Okay, so you can see the result here is 2020. Um, last year was about 36% profit, uh, 30, 36% gain in the entire year. Okay, and uh, 22 one so far this year up to February. Okay, that's 7.31. Okay, so again, um, whatever I'm sharing with you in this particular webinar, of course, I might not, you know, very actively use Candler channels to trade the market, of course, um, I, I won't be able to use all the indicators to trade um, because this entire series, every series, we talk about one indicator, right? There's no way I'm going to use everything in my trading, okay? Uh, but what I want to share with you is that um, this sharing, this whole framework, top process, um, of course, the experience come from 
practical side of trading investing. Okay. Uh, and you know, for those of you who would like to connect with me further beyond, you know, after this webinar, feel free to just search me up on social media. Okay. Um, but just make sure you type the, the correct one, right? Because right now, nowadays, I think uh, quite a bit of fake accounts on social media as well. Okay. Just make sure you type in my full name, uh, so that you'll be able to locate the actual account, right? Whether is it on Facebook or Instagram. Okay. So I do a lot of sharing, um, trading, investing about the financial market on the, my own social media account as well. So if you're interested, you'll be able to follow that. Okay. So that's a very quick one about myself. Um, so let's dive into the objective for today's presentation. So by the end of this session here, you'll be number one, of course, understand deeper what catalog channels are. Okay. Um, of course, the different ways to use it to analyze the market. Okay. So in short today, um, catalog channels, we just call it KC. And uh, of course, we'll show you how to use it and incorporate into a potential trading strategy so that you'll be able to then use it and practice it onto the financial market itself. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show, I'm going to walk you through the presentation slides that I've prepared for you. And of, of course, um, every session over here will then take some time to go into some of the live market charts to you know apply what we actually went through for today's presentation. And then we'll have some time at the end of today's session here as well um, to open up for Q&A. Okay. So if you do have any questions, um, do put it, that means write it down. Okay. But, um, only ask them when we are having a Q and A, because as we are going through this presentation, I might not be able to look at your questions or even answer them throughout, um, when I'm sharing. Okay. So we have a Q and A, just make sure you have your questions right down somewhere. And then during that session, you'll be able to clarify. Them. Okay. So let's start off with understanding what are candle channels. Okay. Um, again, I think it's important to at least understand, you know, where this indicator come from, what is the usage of this indicator. Okay. So KC itself is actually a volatility indicator. Okay. Which is pretty similar to the concept of Bollinger Bands, right? BB is also a volatility indicator. Okay. So this indicator here, KC was introduced by a grain trader. Okay. Uh, of course the name Chester Cantler, that's where the name of Cantler channels come in. Okay, that was back in 1960. Okay, and of course, from there on, uh, there was some revision. Uh, there's some newer development, right, by Linder, okay, in the 1980s. And of course, the KC that we are using right now uh, is actually by um, developed, right, further improved and improvised by Linda. Okay, so this concept here, again, is pretty similar to Bollinger Bands because both of these indicators are tracking volatility in the market. Okay, again, this is important because then if today you are looking to incorporate some indicators into your trading, okay, you do not want to have too many indicators that is telling you the same thing. In other words, you, don't want, you wouldn't want to use KC plus BB together okay, because it defeats the entire purpose, right? So if you are looking for an indicator to track volatility, you either use KC or you use Bollinger Band. Okay. So you don't want to overcomplicate your chart. Okay. So this is important for you to understand. All right. So KC here is a volatility indicator to track volatility in the market. Okay. So over here, there are a few things that you need to understand what goes inside the Kepler channels indicator. So the first component in this indicator here, we do have the middle line. Okay, later I'll show you, uh, I'll show you a, a, a chart so you understand what I'm referring to. Okay, so first off here, there's this first component called the middle line. Okay, basically this middle line is um, just a simple, you know, indicator called the exponential moving average. Okay, I think this is a very, very common indicator that if today you have been trading for at least like a couple of months, you should come across this indicator, right? Exponential moving average. And of course you do have the outer lines. Okay. So you have the top line and the bottom line, uh, that is actually based on the indicator called average true range. Okay. So actually if you take a look at it, right? KC is basically just a combination of two indicators. One is the exponential moving average. The other is the average true range. Okay. But of course it's not just like putting these two indicators on the chart and then you get equivalent to KC. Okay. But, um, the formula, the things that is used to calculate the KC is really based on EMA and ATR. Okay. So this indicator again, as a volatility indicator, it helps 
traders to identify what we call an overbought and oversold level. Okay, so in a while, I'll show you the chart. You'll be very clear with it. Okay, uh, and this is what I meant. Okay, so you can see over here, um, you do have this middle line. Okay, so that is your EMA. You do have the upper and lower line. Okay, that is what we call your ATR, right? Your average true range. And this kind of this indicator here helps you to tell, you know, where is the overbought and oversold condition. Okay. So if you take a look at this, right, the idea is that if price is actually, you know, trading kind of like above at the top of the line, okay, that's what we call overbought, which means price has probably moved up too much and there's a high chance that it will come back into the middle, right? And same thing, if price is actually at the bottom, then there's a very high chance price will reverse and go back to the middle. Okay, now this is of course not how we're going to use it, but I um, just want to share with you, this is usually what we mean by volatility indicator, right? We are tracking the overbought and oversold condition, okay? So this is what we mean by overbought, oversold. Now, to go deeper, right, I want you to understand um, the usage or how we analyze uh, the market using KSC. Okay, so over here, the channel, basically, you know, there's top and bottom, right? So the top is just, you can imagine like um, your dynamic resistance, okay? So it's always moving along with market development. So the top is basically your resistance. The bottom is your support, okay? Uh, but of course, it doesn't mean that you just sell that resistance and then you just buy it support. But um, the idea here is, you know, same principle. If the market or price is near resistance, you don't go and buy it, right? You want to instead wait out and see if there's a sell opportunity and vice versa if it's at a support then you do not want to sell it anymore you want to wait and see if there's a buying opportunity at the support level okay so over here um just some default settings for kc okay again all these settings are customizable depending on the trader's preference but um, I always say, right, uh, really, you do not need to customize it too much. Uh, most often, when I use an indicator, I just use it with a default setting, okay? Uh, what I realized is that a lot of new traders, when they come in and explore indicators, they try to, you know, find the best setting of that particular indicator. Uh, and I can tell you, do not waste time and effort on that, okay? Because there's no such thing as the best indicator, the best setting, okay? Number one, every market is different, okay? So if you're looking at FX, the Euro dollar market is different, the pound dollar is different, the Aussie dollar is different, the dollar cat is different. There's no way you're gonna find the best setting, okay? So what I suggest is just leave it as default, okay? And these are the default settings that um, many traders use for KC, okay? So over here, um, basically the ATR period is 10, Okay, and um, basically we just use a multiplier of two, okay? So you do need to really understand all this, but um, that's the formula, okay? So the settings kind of like tell the indicator, go and calculate, and then it will present it on the chart, okay? So you don't really need to go and calculate it, uh, but just at least appreciate, right, what's the default setting. And of course, uh, the EMA period here we are using is 20, okay? So the middle line is your EMA, which is, has a period of 20. And of course, the upper and lower lines, that's your ATR. We use a period of 10 with a multiplier of 2. Okay. So again, uh, depending on what platform you're using, MT4, MT5, if today you're using a charting platform like TradingView, okay, again, all this settings are available in that platform itself, right? The respective platforms. You'll be able to go and look at it. Okay. So over here, uh, I want you to always reference back to the middle line when you're trading the KC, right? Because the middle line here is basically your EMA and that is where it tells you, number one, the direction and it tells us the mean, okay, the average. So this middle line tends to act as a pullback level, okay? So for example, if it's an uptrend and price starts to pull back a little bit, it usually goes towards the middle line. And vice versa, if the price is coming down, it's in a downtrend, when there's a correction, there's a pullback, it usually goes back to the middle line, okay? So show you some example on the, um, an uptrend and of course downtrend. So this is the example of an uptrend. You can see while price is going up, okay? You can see how this middle line, which is your EMA, tends to act as a, re as a support, right? So you can see price actually bounce up. It breaks out of the cat low channel, which is your overbought condition. It tends to pull back towards the middle line. And then from there, it continues up again, right? 
and of course after that it pulls back into the middle line as well okay so don't get um confused for now like how to trade it we'll talk about it okay but at least for now understand the middle line okay which is your ema how this is being used to analyze okay so same thing in the downtrend okay you can see the middle line is important for reference because as long as price remains in below that middle line you can see over here right below that middle line technically we are still in a downtrend and of course you can see the pullback always happens back towards the middle line okay and then of course you can see here it starts to break above that middle line so that's where you see okay the downtrend might have ended okay so this is how you use the middle line okay so this is the simplest first step to understanding kc and using it to your analysis okay so to kind of like you know um, rephrase it a little bit as long as price is above the middle line okay go back to this as long as price is above the middle line and it stays uh, uh, around that top level okay you have a healthy uptrend and if price starts to cross below that then you know okay the uptrend might have ended vice versa if price is continuously you know maintaining below the middle line then you know this is a healthy downtrend and once price starts to cross above it you know okay the downtrend might have ended okay so that's a very very quick and simple way of analyzing using kc okay and of course you can see this is where i talk about the pullback right oversold pullback to the middle line continue dropping oversold pullback into the middle line continue dropping and oversold again and pullback okay so this is what it tends to happen in the market okay so over here okay let's start off by you know putting the pieces together and constructing what we call a trading strategy okay so the first thing that you as a trader you want to determine is of course the direction i think this is very important okay before you decide like where to to trade when to execute your trade you need to first determine whether you want to buy or sell okay and this is what we call directional bias okay this is very important because before you even say i want to execute my trade right now you need to know whether you want to buy or sell Okay, so the first step, of course, from any analysis is to establish what we call a bias. Are you looking for buy or are you looking for sell? Okay, and we can use KC to help us in determining whether to buy or sell. Okay, so first off here, we want to identify and look at the angle of the band, right? So we are talking band, band here, referring to just the KC. Okay, so look at the slope and the angle of it okay so if today it's at a two o'clock angle okay so imagine it's a clock you know two two o'clock you roughly can imagine where it's pointing right so if it's a two two o'clock slope okay that's basically telling you we are in an uptrend you want to focus on buy okay and vice versa if today you are seeing that the angle of the slope is about four o'clock then we are in a downtrend you want to focus on sell obviously okay if it's a three o'clock means it's a range then um don't do anything okay because um we are not in a in a trend then uh, the direction is not clear over here okay so then you don't trade okay so that's the first step okay the second of course we can reference it back to the middle line which is your ema okay so if price is of course above your ema and it's maintaining above your ema that's an uptrend and if price is below your ema that's a downtrend okay you can also look at the slope of the ema if the ema is like three o'clock you know it's a range okay so that's the idea of directional bias very very simple and straightforward because kc itself is telling you that okay so let's take a look at some charts okay this is obviously two o'clock right so you can see um the, the channel of the slope is going up is somewhere around two o'clock oops Okay, so the idea here is if it's two o'clock, it's an uptrend. Okay, and not only that, can you see that price is actually mostly above the EMA, right? So it's a healthy uptrend until over here it starts to cross, and then that transit into what we call a three o'clock. Okay, so this side here, this is what we call a healthy uptrend. Okay. Um, and of course you can see right price comes down to the middle line it bounces off comes down to the middle line it bounces off so everything tells you this is a healthy uptrend now on the other side can I give you an example this is coming down okay very obvious right the slope of the entire kc here is 4 p.m four o'clock okay so it's a downtrend 
and what you do observe is also price is actually at the bottom of the EMA. Okay, so overall, it's telling you, okay, this is a downtrend. Okay, so again, price is mainly below it. Every time it comes to the middle line, it goes down. It comes to the middle line, it continues to go down. All right, so as of now, over here, um, this is the latest price. Okay, it's still in a downtrend. Okay, uh, so that's how we establish directional bias. Now with that, then of course, once you identify, okay, I want to buy, I want to sell, or if it's in the range, you do not want to trade. Okay, the next stage, of course, is once you have a directional bias, you want to know how to execute a trade. Okay, so over here, there's, there's also some ways that we can use to kind of like using KC, okay, Kettler channel, to tell us when to execute a trade. Okay, so you need to have certain timing element as well, right? After you know why, whether you want to buy or sell, you need to know when, okay, when to buy, when to sell. So over here, um, the first step is that you want to, okay, so this is again a little bit in terms of the strategy component. Okay, so the first step over here is you want to kind of like check for a candlestick breakout of the channel, okay? In a while, I'll show you the chart, then you understand what I mean, okay? So the first step over here is to wait and see if there's a candle breakout of the channel, okay? The second is to wait for a pullback, okay? So you do not want to just trade when price break out, but you understand that every time it's overbought, oversold, price tends to come back to the middle, right? So you want to wait for that to happen, wait for the pullback to the, to the EMA, and then you confirm again the direction of the slope and the angle, right? It's still in the direction you want to trade, Okay, and that's where you execute when there's a candlestick confirmation. Okay, so over here, obviously you need a little bit of candlestick understanding and of course knowledge in order for you to trade. Okay, again, as a trader, you can't just trade just based on like one specific indicator, right? You need to have a little bit knowledge on technical analysis. Okay, so today over here, let me show you the whole walkthrough, right? So first off, um, this is an example that I'm using on the, um, the Aussie Japanese yen. Okay, um, this is actually a daily chart, right? So uh, later I'll share with you why KC for trend following um, you is better for you to look at it from a higher time frame perspective. Okay, so you realize that a lot of the example I'm using is actually daily chart. Okay, so now look at this. Okay, this candle here actually very strong very bullish okay and then it closed out of the channel right so you can see this is the top it actually closed at the top of it okay so that's what we meant by candle breakout of the channel okay this one here so that's the first thing you want to identify right you want to first wait for a candle to break off the channel okay the second step is to wait for a pullback okay so you can see over here after it broke it starts to pull back Okay, where does it usually go? Okay, overbought, right? Where do you usually go? It goes back to the middle line, which is your EMA. Okay, so that's where you want to wait for the pullback. So we see that already, right? Right now it has pullback. Then the next stage here is to wait for a candle confirmation. Okay, so over here, of course, few candles that are very popular and common. You can be a pin bar forming at your middle line, at your EMA, it can be a bullish pin bar. It can be an engulfing, okay? Um, it can be, you know, some of you likes to look at doji, for example, an inside bar, breakout, etc. Okay. Now you don't need to have like you don't need to memorize everything, okay? All you really need is like maybe one or two signal. Okay. So the most common one and the easiest one to identify, of course, is a pin bar or an engulfing. Okay. So over here, um, this is what we, you know, you can see over here it is a red candle is coming down and then you have a solid green one and then the next candle actually is pretty much a full body right so it's a very bullish sign and it's happening around the ema right so this candle here is basically what we call a buy signal okay so once that candle closes for the day you can look out for the execution the following day okay so over here very simple okay your entry you can set up when the candle closed, which means you enter the following day. And your stop loss here, of course, if you're buying, you put it at the bottom channel of your KC. Okay, so this becomes your risk, okay? So this is a trend 
following strategy. Okay, so technically you do not have a precise take profit. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to ride the trend as far as we can. Okay, so this strategy here as a trend following, you usually do not have a hard take profit. Okay, you just ride it as far as you can. So you have an entry, you have a stop loss. Okay, and then let me show you what happened next as we follow through. Okay, you can see price continue to go hit high higher. Okay, so that's where you're making good profits as of now. And you want to also keep an eye on where the price is in relation to your EMA and the slope. Okay, very important, right? Because if you're buying, you want to make sure that the uptrend is intact. Okay, so if you take a look at this here as of now, the slope is still going up. That's good. It's an uptrend. Price is still trading above the EMA. Good. It's an uptrend, right? So your, your particular buy trade here is still okay. Nothing to worry about. Okay, then as we keep progressing, okay, you can see that what you can do is we can shift our stops higher following the entire KC. Okay, and if you're buying, of course, your stop loss will be placed at the bottom of the KC. If you're selling, then your stop loss will be placed at the top of the KC. Okay, so you always manage your stop loss as the market continues to develop. Okay, so this is to pr protect your risk, right? You want to first mitigate your risk, and then from there, you start to protect the profits that you make. Okay, now let's follow through a little bit what happened next. Okay, price keeps going up. Okay, and at this very moment, your stop loss, you keep following the lower KC, right? So it has now here, so you shift it here. You can see your entry is here, your stop loss is here. What does this mean is that right now, you are risk-free. Okay, the worst thing that can happen to you is that if the market U-turns and come back down, you will not lose money. In fact, you actually made a small profit because your stop loss is above where you bought it. Okay, so that's what we mean by trend following strategy, right? You write the trend as much as you can. Okay, and let's follow through a little bit. Now, for those of you who are quick and sharp, you'll be able to see that this is also a signal here. Okay, why do I say it? Number one, can you see this candle actually break out of the, the channel? And then what happens? We wait for the pullback. This pullback comes in. And then what happens? You have, of course, this is a candle pin bar, a rejection. If you don't enter from there, you can also see that this green candle here, that's what we call an engulfing bar, okay? So again, that's a signal. Basically, this tree candle here is your opportunity to get in again, okay? So let me show you next, okay? So here's another buy signal, right? But let's assume that we don't buy it because we already have one trade running, right? So we just continue to monitor it, okay? Price keeps going up. You can see where we got in, huh? okay? This is where we got in. Today, the market is here. Okay, so of course there are multiple buy signals you can see, right? Okay, but let's not talk about those first, okay? But number one, I want you to see we entered here. We continue to shift our stop loss according to the bottom of the KC. And right now, this is where our stop loss is, okay? So if you just base on this, right? You can see this is where we enter. This is where the market is, okay? That is actually your current running profits. But because your stop loss is here, this is your lock-in profits. Can you see that? Right. This is a profit that's guaranteed. This is the running profits that you see over here. Because if price were to start new turn, this is where you're going to get out. And this is the profits that you're going to get. Okay. So this, in short, of course, is a little bit ideal. You're not going to get, you know, not every trade you're going to get something like this. Okay. But um, as part of the presentation, I need to find something that is very, very clear. Something that's easy for you to understand the whole principle and concept. Okay. So... Again, um, this is what we call trend following. Okay? Basically, you just write out as much as you can and you just use your stop loss to protect your capital, protect your profits, um, and that's how you do it. Okay? And of course, you can see these are, again, just like I mentioned, these are potential entry signals again. Okay? Imagine you can enter a trade here as well. Again, that's profit. Enter a trade here as well. Again, that's profit. Okay? So that's what we meant. Okay? So I hope so far so good, right? Um, again, it's a very simple indicator how to analyze the market, how to use it and incorporate into a potential trading strategy, okay? So let's sum up a little bit and then I'll walk you through into some live charts example and then we'll go into Q&A for today, okay? So summary over here, uh, KC is actually an indicator that's best used when the market is trending. So when it's in a range bound, then it's a little bit difficult for you to actually use it, 
Okay. Um, when the market is range, basically you do not want to trade it. Okay. Um, you probably need another indicator or another strategy to trade the range. But if you're using KC, if you're in, you're looking at KC, basically you're trading the trend. Okay. And ideally, just like I also mentioned, right? If you're trend following, you're looking to trade a trend, you want to make sure that you're trading on a higher time frame. Okay. The reason here is very simple because if today you go down to a smaller time frame, uh, the trend can rotate, the trend can change very, very quickly. Okay. And um, again, for traders, unless you're going to sit in front of your computer and keep monitoring the charts, it's not going to be ideal for you. Okay. So if today you're looking at KC, then focus on higher time frame. I would say somewhere like four hour time frame, daily time frame. These are the two time frames perhaps you want to keep an eye on. Okay. And of course, the last part here, uh, just now I also mentioned, right? You can't just use KC as a strategy itself. You need to add on a little bit in terms of a candlestick formation knowledge or maybe chart patterns. Okay. So again, after understanding what KC is, the advantage of it, okay, um, you still need to further your knowledge about the different technical aspect of trading. Okay, so that's a quick summary. Let's hop on onto uh, the charts here on the live market and uh, walk you through the whole, um, you know, flow of it. Okay, now, um, again, not all market is suitable. Okay, very quickly, I'll just walk you through some and I'll uh, share with you my whole thought process of that. Okay, so first off, um, this is Euro dollar. I'll be focusing on the, um, the daily, of course, the four hour. These are the two time frames I think is um, better. Okay, uh, unless again, as, as I mentioned, you, you sit in front of your computer and trade, then you can go lower time frame. But uh, if you're not doing that, then just stick to four hour and daily. Okay, so first off over here, this is the daily. Okay, now this is where the current market price is. Can you see the slope of this? Okay, it's, it's coming down, right? So technically, this is more of a downtrend. Take a look where the price is. The price is actually at the bottom of the EMA. Okay, so again, we are in a downtrend as of now. Okay, and with this in mind, straight away your direction bias is I want to focus on sell. Okay, I'm not interested in the buy. I want to focus on sell. Okay, and of course, right now you do not want to sell it here. You want to wait for price to come back to the EMA, right? The middle line and wait for a confirmation. So as of now, nothing has happened yet. So what you have on Euro dollar based on the daily chart based on KC analysis is that you have a downtrend, you want to focus on sell, but you do not want to sell now. You need to be patient. Okay, That's what it's telling us for, for at this very moment. Okay, On the other hand, if you go to the four hour time frame, what is it telling you? This is sideways, right? Three o'clock. Don't trade. Okay, So based on euro dollar, basically you have nothing. Okay, So sometimes when you look at the chart, there's no trade, move on to the next one. Okay. Um, give me a moment. Let me go to the correct watch list. Okay. Next one, pound dollar, right? Very quickly, you take a look at this. This is a four hour, right? Three o'clock, don't trade. Okay. But let's take a look at the daily, right? Okay. Daily also three o'clock, right? Can you see this sideways? Very clear. When you use KC immediately, you want to identify the direction, the bias of it. Very easy. Okay. So this one here, no trade. Okay. Um, again, this is more like three o'clock, no trade. Okay, this one here so okay, no trade. Okay, now this very clear. What what is the slope down, right? And obviously you can see this one here, price is actually below at the lower bottom of the entire channel. So we are in a downtrend. Okay. So this one here, of course, you do not want to sell here, you want to wait for a pullback. Okay. Now if I just go back a little bit before all this happens. Okay, at this very moment, okay, uh, can you see this is a potential signal, right? The candle closed below this and then it pulls back and then you see some pin bar formation. Okay, that's your signal to trade it. Okay, uh? so I hope you see it. Of course, that's passed already, right? You can't really trade that now. So right now is a downtrend for dollar cat. Okay, but what you want to do is wait for a pullback towards this EMA and then you wait for maybe a candlestick pattern okay let's take a look at the four hour four hour so very clear right look at where the candle is the price is actually below it's sloping down okay this is more like five o'clock okay so this is definitely a downtrend so what you want to do is of course wait for price to come back up maybe around this line here if you see a candle let's say a rejection candle like that a pin bar 
that's your signal to trade it. Okay. So for now, of course, there's there isn't, but the direction is very clear, right? I hope you can see that first, right? The direction is very clear. We want to focus on the downside. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This one, three o'clock, nothing much. Okay, dollar yen. Look at this, it's sloping up, right? Okay, this is sloping up, and of course, you can see price is actually at the top of the EMA. Um, since actually since this cross here, all this has been at the top of EMA, right? So everything is up. So the direction is very clear. Okay, on the daily, even clearer. Okay, since over here, this is up. Okay, but of course, you don't want to buy here, right? What you want to do is wait for it to come back to the middle line. That's where you look out for your entry. Okay, so take note of that. Same thing for Euro Yen, very obvious, right? Sloping up is actually price is maintaining at the upper upper side of the channel. Uptrend. Focus on buy, but not now. Wait for a pullback. Okay. Let's take a look at four hour, four hour, same thing. Okay, it's sloping up. Uh, but of course you need to maybe wait for another day for it to come down towards this line, right? This middle EMA. Then you look for a candle confirmation, you can continue to look for it outside, right? Very, very straightforward. Okay, so this one here again, you can see this here, okay, this here, this candle. Let me play back a little bit. Okay, this candle is what we call a signal. Can you see that? Okay, everything fulfills, right? It's sloping up, price is at the top, so you want to focus on buy. You have a candle breakout, it pulls back, and then you have this candlestick formation. Okay, this is where your entry will be, okay, and then that's how price plays out. Okay, of course now it's more or less like a little bit only, right? So you can see that, right? Hope you can see that what I what I'm referring to. It's a very simple technique, but don't overcomplicate your chart. Okay. Let's continue, move on. Okay, um, this is again same thing, Aussie yen, right? You can see price is actually at the top. It broke it. Right now it's coming back to the middle line. Maybe you give it another day. If there's a candlestick confirmation, you can look for the buy. For the move to continue to the upside okay daily here so you can see it's an uptrend very obvious okay uh new zealand yen as well right a lot of the yen pairs are actually very obvious they are to the upside okay same thing for cat yen uh this one here basically is inside right so nothing is sideways okay uh this is down okay you can see very obvious right okay again you can see this Break down, go back up to the middle, you see a pin bar, that is your entry. And then of course, right now here, this is where you're enjoying some profits at this real moment. Okay, so same thing, very obvious, downtrend, focus on the sell. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually just giving you a lot of examples so that you get the idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, Euro Aussie also is down, okay? So you wanna focus on the sell, right? This is a little bit on the sideways, okay, so maybe not too much, okay. But of course, this is a signal, okay. Can you see this? This is a signal, right? Price close below it, before it is down, 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 down. Price close below it, comes back, pull back. This is a candle, pin bar rejection. This is a signal to sell, okay. Of course, right now, then, this trade here is just a little bit about break even, okay. Your entry is here, your stop loss is here, okay. So that's how you go. Uh, now, let me... Just jump straight to maybe some commodities, right? Some of you are trading commodities. Like this is gold. Okay, let's go to the four hour time frame. Okay, um, now four hour time frame, you can see, well, it was coming down, coming down, coming down, and then this breaks out of it, right? So you can see price has been maintaining down, and then when price starts to break out of this, okay, break above the middle line, that's where you know, okay, the downtrend might have changed. Okay, and right now you can see the slope is starting to go up. Okay, so and price is actually trading above at the top part of the channel. Okay, so you want to then now be more on the bullish side, right? So this is a four hour time frame. On a four hour time frame perspective, you want to wait for the bull side. Okay, so wait for a signal, which means you first need to have a candle breaking above the channel and then a pullback towards the middle line. And then maybe from there, you see a candlestick formation. That is your signal to buy. Okay, not now. Now don't have, right? Now you don't have that set up yet. Okay, silver. Okay, same thing as gold, right? More or less similar. Uh, this is oil. Okay, oil you can see is basically in the middle of it. So nothing much. Okay, so you realize that the first thing you want to really identify is do you have a very obvious like break out of the channel? Okay. What is breakout? You can see these are breakouts, right? These are breakouts, these are breakouts, these are breakouts. 
okay if it's trading in between the channel then you have no signal just be patient right look at other instrument first okay same thing because this is a technical uh indicator right you can even look at indices like your s p okay same thing this is up right can see very obvious it's up okay so you have a break here wait for a pullback okay as of now um haven't really touched the middle line yet so no signal okay if you're looking at like um stocks individual stocks okay you can also look at that um this is tesla okay so same thing uh it broke down okay but you don't have a signal to enter here right so nothing much as of now okay so any anything that has a chart you'll be able to apply kc onto it the same principle can be used for trading okay um bitcoin as well okay for some of you who are looking at bitcoins okay um again take a look at this right this is solid signal right uh, but of course you want to wait for the you want to wait for the candle to close okay now if you are not familiar with bitcoin then don't trade it right don't don't think that oh because it's a signal then you just buy you need to understand risk management and things like that as well okay but this is a valid signal as we are speaking first off look at where price is right above 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 so buy right the direction here is buy next you see price actually broke out okay and then a retracement a pullback back to the middle okay and right now if this candle here closes like a full body of green so that's a very bullish sign right that's a candle pattern and then that can be a signal to actually go in for a potential buy all right so that's one way you can take a look at it okay so uh you know this one here is something that if the candle close bullish then yeah you have a signal to trade it okay so hope it's clear again um you know i can't just show you exactly like right now what we have because depending on the market development you know if there's nothing then really nothing right yeah right so you can see um really nothing much okay probably the closest one that you know we have is um bitcoin okay yeah yeah okay the closest one <laughs> is really bitcoin okay you can see this right so oops okay so this is a classic setup breakout pullback wait for a candle formation if it's bullish buy it right uh, but of course this is for educational purpose right if you're trading bitcoin it's a very volatile pair you need to have your proper risk management you need to understand the market for some time before you trade bitcoin okay if not just don't trade something like that right this is just an example of what we are looking out for good okay um not sure if you guys have any questions that you want to clarify okay uh if you have uh i think right now is a good time for you to type in any questions that you have you would like to clarify then uh, from there, I'll be able to look at it and answer your questions accordingly. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can type it into the chat right now. And then uh, from there, we'll be able to answer your questions. Any? All good. Okay. Uh, anyway, if, if there's no questions, right, I want you to see that, um, you know, KC itself is really that simple, okay? A lot of times I see traders tend to like overcomplicate their entire analysis process or even uh, they tend to like add in a lot of things and then they just confuse themselves, okay? So don't do that, okay? Um, again, you want to understand and appreciate the simplicity of a strategy. Uh, doesn't mean simple means it's not effective, okay? In fact, um, from my years of trading, if you try to overcomplicate your charts, your analysis, your strategy, uh, more often than not, it's going to hurt you than benefit you, okay? At the end of the day, um, again, you do not want to act put in every indicator that you know into a chart. That doesn't help also, okay? So the idea is um, you need to find maybe, you know, a few 
method that you can't align with it. Okay, so this again comes down to your personality, your character, your time, commitment, um, that all this element comes in. Okay, but of course, we won't be able to do that um, over here in this webinar, right? Uh, but the idea here we are focusing on is to introduce to you as many of these indicators that we can. Okay, with the, with the objective, of course, uh, once you are aware of this indicator, you know a little bit about it, you spend some time, go and practice, play around with it. Okay, and then from there, you have a better understanding if it fits you. Okay, if it does, great. Okay, then you have found an indicator that you love. Continue working on it, improve on it, understand a little bit more. Okay, uh, if you feel that, okay, this is not for me, great. Okay, at least you, you can have like an elimination process, right? So you know this indicator doesn't work for you. Look out for the next one. Okay, so again, there's a little bit of like testing also. Okay, so um, in, in the same thing, right? If today you play sports, okay, um, you know, you need to try out various shoes, see which one fits you, which one you like, right? Same thing. Okay, or if you are, let's say, a, a badminton player, then you want to find the right racket that fits you. Okay, so in terms of trading, it's the same thing, right? Uh, your indicator, your analysis method, your strategy is basically tools. Okay, and you want to try that out, figure out if that tool fits you as a trader. Okay, so uh, if there's no question, uh, I hope then today's presentation here is clear enough to help you in your trading journey. Okay, uh, with that, then of course, um, we'll end off today's sharing over here. Okay, same thing next week, we'll come back um, on Monday as well. Okay, same timing about 9, uh, 9 p.m. We'll share with you another indicator. Okay, and from there, of course, um, you, know, you build up your indicator, got two kits, two box, and then um, you actually have a much better understanding of how to do technical analysis. Okay, so for those of you who are keen to expand your knowledge on all these indicators, then uh, do join us next week. Monday as well. Right, so with that, um, we'll end off today's session over here. All the best to your trading for the week, and I'll see you guys next Monday. Okay, see you. Bye bye.